The hilltop village of Badun is a two-hour drive north of Zaragoza, and it's here that our guest house, Casa Sarasa, is located. The fields in front of the guest house have been planted with a variety of native wildflowers, which attract an interesting range of butterflies. This spotted fritillary is just one of those I saw. The village of Badon is quaint and reverberates the call of nesting swallows and martins. Here a pair of young house martins await the arrival of another beak full of food. Badon is located on a plateau between the Varel and Aragon rivers and its hilltop position affords spectacular views towards the distant mountains. A pair of little owls have made their home in a derelict farm building not far from the village. The Rio Aragon is a big river which drains the high Pyrenees, but in July it's running low. In a marshy backwater close to the river, Iberian water frogs are making a raucous noise. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Casa Sarasa, the nightly moth trap has lured a good haul, dominated by pine processionary moths. But there are more interesting creatures in there too, such as this oak hawk moth. In human habitats like sawmills and such like, so uh, absolutely splendid. I've only ever seen that once before, and that was here, but um, in, the, in the past and subject to... It's the morning after our arrival, and we're taking a walk north of the village towards the valley of the Rio Varal. And obviously then with interesting plants, you've got interesting insects associated with them. Again, what we'll see, I don't know, but that, that's the general landscape. The, the valley here is the valley of the Rio Veral, which comes out from the High Pyrenees over there, down through this gorge, uh, just to the right of the farm there. That's the Binia's gorge. It's, it's very attractive to A range of interesting wildflowers are found in the valley. Believe it or not, there's a stick insect in there somewhere. And if you don't believe me, here it is. Hurry up, I'm trying. A range of butterfly species is present, of which the marbled white is probably the most abundant. The blue butterflies are notoriously difficult to identify, but this one's Chapman's blue. Here's a bath white, a species which just occasionally turns up in the UK. And this is a mallow skipper. Good numbers of Spanish purple hair streak were nectaring on dwarf elder. In the afternoon, we made the short drive to the valley of the Rio Aragon, 
where we were rewarded with a fleeting glimpse of a golden oriole and a better sighting of a bee eater. On the banks of a small stream, a female beautiful demoiselle is devouring prey. Meanwhile, in the skies above, three Egyptian vultures put in an appearance, a youngster and two adults. These spectacular bonnet moths were sharing the scabious flowers with the various butterflies, which included the Cleopatra. High brown fritillaries were also in evidence, along with a mating pair of knapweed fritillaries. A little further down the valley, we found mating marsh fritillaries and a fantastic praying mantis. Next day, a brief stop on the banks of a reservoir, en route to the mountain slopes of Puerto de Portlet, gave us a glimpse of a diminutive Lang's short-tailed blue. The mountain flora and the scenery at Puerto de Portlet were spectacular. But many of the butterflies we saw, which included Apollo and Clouded Apollo, were restless and gave few opportunities for photographs. Quails were calling in the long grass and it was here that we had our best view of a Lamagaya. One of the few butterflies that did allow a close approach was this Geranium Argus. The sculpture park, a couple of miles from Badon, was awash with butterflies when we visited on a sweltering morning when the temperatures soared to over 30 degrees. Among the species observed was this pristine Spanish swallowtail, along with its cousin the common swallowtail. Several fritillaries were on the wing including the diminutive Weaver's Fritillary, also known as the Violet Fritillary, and this Queen of Spain Fritillary. Later in the day we visited the spectacular Fago Gorge, where griffon vultures were a common sight as they soared around the high limestone outcrops. No, 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 that's the best way. At least we can keep an eye on everyone then. Yeah. A few clouded yellows were on the wing. And on one occasion we saw a butterfly which we took to be the pale helici form. But on close inspection I now believe it might be a female burgers clouded yellow. Several species of hair streak were in evidence, with the blue spot hair streak perhaps the most common. This one's an ilex hair streak. And this one with its relatively faint hair streak mark a false ilex hair streak. After pausing for drinks in a delightful Pyrenees village, we move on to the nearby Binny's Gorge.
The infant Rio Varel, which cuts through the gorge, is populated by trout. High up on a rock outcrop, a griffon vulture is silhouetted against the skyline. A pair of goats have found their way to a ledge on a towering cliff, but we're told that these are herded animals rather than wild ones. Griffon vultures clearly find the high cliffs of the gorge to their liking. On the roadside verges, various hair streaks are nectaring. These are blue spot hair streaks. The larger of the two butterflies seen here is a tatty Spanish purple hair streak and the other one a false ilex hair streak. This spectacular caterpillar will eventually turn into a spurge hawk moth. It's another new day and we're heading up into the mountains again. La Contienda is a high altitude nature reserve with some spectacular mountain flora. There are some interesting butterflies on the wing, including burgers clouded yellow, but they're not pausing for photographs. In the afternoon, we drop into some wildflower rich meadows further down the valley at Belagua. However, it's the dirt track that cuts through the meadows which seems to have attracted the interesting butterflies, including this Osiris blue. And this Abertha's grizzled skipper. And one of the highlights of the whole week, a large tortoise shell. Next day we're in the Hecho Valley and a gorge known as the Boca del Inferno. An overnight thunderstorm has swollen the river with muddy water. The first butterfly we see is this Adonis blue, a species which does occur locally in the south of England. This is butterwort, 
a carnivorous plant, and as can be seen, lots of insects have already become trapped on its sticky leaves. Further up the gorge, we pause beside a dry stone wall, which is a known site for the rare oscillated lizard. It can grow to over a foot in length, but only one member of the group catches a fleeting glimpse. Some consolation comes in the adjoining meadow, where a Spanish swallowtail is on the wing. Meanwhile, in a car park on the opposite side of the river, a common swallowtail is seeking nutrients in the mud. And a false heath fritillary nectars on scabious. Escher's blue was also observed in the locality. And a large wall brown was nectaring in one of the meadows. We're close to the top of the valley now, hoping for some high altitude species. Intriguingly, this tiny puddle holds two different types of tadpole. We concluded that the larger one is probably the Pyrenean brook salamander, while the other is the common frog. A spectacular mullein moth caterpillar is browsing nearby. And a tiny silver studded blue is resting on the track. Down in the valley floor, a red-billed chuff is seeking insects. The yellow-billed alpine chuff is also present in the locality. Butterfly orchids grow amongst the long grass. For the last full day of the holiday, we've headed up into the Acer Valley. It's a little cloudy to begin with, which means that the butterflies aren't particularly active, but we still managed to track down this Ripart's anomalous blue. A small field which hasn't yet been cut for hay holds several species, including this great banded grayling. and a mating pair of marbled whites. A knapweed fritillary rests on the flattened grass. It's back into the minibus for another short drive which brings us to this roadside stand of Dwarf Elder. We believe this butterfly is not a White Admiral, but a Southern White Admiral, which has probably been on the wing for a while, and therefore has lost its characteristic blue sheen. This magnificent scarce copper was resting in the thick grass. 
Other notable butterflies seen on the day included this southern marbled skipper. Along with turquoise blue, Isha's blue and Spanish chalk hill blue. On most of the sites we visited, we found these large green-eyed horseflies on the umbellifers. A little further up the valley, a mountain elk on blue is busy laying eggs. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, I see it there. And it corresponds with the image. Further up the valley still, another stand of dwarf elder has attracted a southern white admiral. This one unmistakable with its deep blue sheen. You see the blue on it? We believe this butterfly, which was active nearby, is an aberration of the Southern White Admiral which lacks the white markings on the wings. The Dwarf Elder also attracted this chestnut heath. A hundred metres down the road, a pair of heath fritillaries were nectaring together, while nearby, a dark green fritillary was basking. A brief call at the Antares stream during the drive home gave us a glimpse of a Benelli's warbler. It was there that we spotted this striking western banded demoiselle, which differs from its UK cousin in having a blue body rather than a green one. The holiday's nearly over, and we break the journey back to Zaragoza with a couple of stops putting up this large party of black kites in one field. And we finally catch up with a cicada, which we've heard often through the week, but haven't managed to see. And small wonder with that camouflage. So it's time to hit the motorway for the last leg of the journey to the airport. So it's a fond farewell to Zaragoza and the Pyrenees as we head back to Stansted Airport.